Now that we're comfortable with the circuit analysis techniques in the Laplace domain, let's de develop a, uh, a concept known as a transfer function. Our purpose here will be to develop a mathematical expression for a circuit. In this case, it'll be this series RLC circuit, but in general, it can be any circuit. We're going to develop a method of determining a mathematical expression for how, or a mathematical expression representing this circuit, the circuit only independent of the input. So that what we'll have is some mathematical representation, H of S, in the Laplace domain that we can apply a input to and determine the output. So let's uh, just proceed here by realizing that we can represent the output, or we can write an expression for the output, the Laplace representation of the output, given some arbitrary input to this circuit by using a voltage divider. We can then say that V out of S is equal to V in of S times L of S, or L times S, divided by the sum of the three impedances. Now, we define the transfer function. We're going to define the transfer function as the ratio of the output as a function of S divided by the inf input as a function of S. So in this case here, we're going to simply divide both sides of this equation by V in of S and call that H of S, and what we have left is LS over R plus 1 over CS plus LS. Now, as we've done in the past, let's go ahead and clean up the denominator so that it's written in terms of highest power of S with a leading coefficient of 1 and then going on through, its de through um, the reducing powers of S. To do that, we notice that we have an S here multiplied by L, so we need to multiply by 1 over L to get that to cancel. And we have an S here in the denominator, which we need to get out of the denominator. So if we multiply by S here, we'll be able to get rid of the S in the denominator. And of course, we can't just do it to the denominator. We've got to do it to the numerator also. So that after multiplying numerator and denominator by S over L, we have S squared over S squared plus R over LS plus 1 over LC. This expression right here, then, is the transfer function for this circuit where the output is taken as the voltage across the inductor. And you'll notice that it was derived without specifying the input. Thus, this transfer function is independent of the input. And each circuit can be similarly represented. It's interesting to note that here in the denominator, we've got that S squared plus R over LS plus 1 over LC. You'll recognize that term has popped up many times when analyzing this series circuit. This was the characteristic equation back when we were using the traditional or, uh, um, yeah, the traditional uh, differential equation approach to analyzing this type of a circuit. All right, so now that we have H of S, which again is simply denoted as or simply represents the ratio of the output to the input, let's look at how we can use H of S to determine the output of a circuit for now some specific input. So we know then that V out is simply equal to the Laplace transform of the input times the transfer function. We now have the transfer function there, so V out is equal to V in times the transfer function. Let's now specify V in. In fact, let's, for this purpose, let's say that the V in of time is equal to this cosine term here. From the Laplace tra transform tables, we know that the Laplace representation of this time domain signal is V sub M S cosine of phi plus omega sine of phi over S squared plus omega squared. Because of this very convenient product relationship, we can now write the Laplace transform of the output. It's simply equal to the Laplace transform of the input times the transfer function of the circuit. This is incredibly useful. We're going to see as we go forward that by thus representing the transfer function, we can, and representing it one time, we can then determine the output for any arbitrary input that we'd like to apply to the circuit as long as the Laplace transform for that input signal applies.
So at this point then, all we would do if we were continuing forward, we would then break this out into its partial fractions, inverse transform into the time domain, and have our time domain signal. The approach then would be to take our input signal, calculate our transfer function, transform the input signal to the Laplace domain, multiply the Laplace representation of the input signal times the transfer function, inverse transform it back into the time domain, and we've got the resulting time domain function.